So one of the more interesting narratives that's kind of come up recently is Kyle Shanahan. And how good is Kyle Shanahan really? I mean, obviously we know Kyle Shanahan led one of the greatest offenses ever. He was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons when they nearly went to the Super Bowl. Uh, some interesting stats about Shanahan is, you know, his he's sort of talked about as this guy with, you know, always getting great running games. That hasn't really been the case since his, uh, you know, days with the Washington Redskins. Since then, uh, he's, he's had two seasons where they've had a top 10 yards per carry running attack. Both of those seasons, though, they did go to the Super Bowl for what it's worth. Um, so, Let's talk about Shanahan. Let's kind of talk about what's going right and what's going wrong because I do think a lot of the issues with this 49ers team tend to be on defense. Like their offense isn't great, but their offense has been mediocre this season, in my opinion. And I think they have mediocre talent. I think, especially with some of the injuries they've had this season, I think the the hole is pretty. I would I would consider it mediocre, not necessarily bad. And that's Shanahan's job is to lead an offense. So yeah, uh, let's get into the film study and talk about. Uh, really what I see when I watch, uh, you know, the 49ers play. So it is fair to say there are some things like this where what's going to happen is that the way this play is designed to work is you make your reads from the inside out, basically. You want to, you know, basically look further down the field. The, you initially are going to make your read towards the middle and then further out, and then you go underneath if neither of those two routes are open. That's how this should work. It's against zone coverage, so all these routes could potentially get open against this type of coverage, uh, and typically if the you know two deeper routes are, you know, if those two aren't open, it would be because the players had to stay further deep, meaning the underneath route should get open. And right when this play starts, you notice that right here, so Kittle, the first read, who basically should be the first read on every play, uh, he's not open. So you can't go to that read. What should you do now? Obviously, the second read could potentially get open. And in fact, I think that's probably where Garoppolo should make this throw. Uh, however, Garoppolo is not even going to look in that direction. Even though Ayuk was open, he throws a check down to Kyle Juchek, who gains some yards. It's not the worst play in the world, but you have more yards available. And that is an aspect, is Garoppolo for being a game manager isn't always the best at managing a game, and that's kind of one of the issues with him and kind of part of why the San Francisco 49ers haven't been as successful. You also have stuff like this where, you know, we talk about the vaunted Kyle Shanahan run scheme, but it's not always perfect, and, uh, you know, this season there have, or really, I mean, and in plenty of seasons you've seen stuff like this, but this is one of the ways you can attack this scheme, especially if you're a team like Arizona who now has played uh, the 49ers a lot and have gotten more used to it. So the way this works is it's just going to be a toss to the outside, and how you're going to try and make this work is you have a receiver who's basically going to blindside 44 right there. He's not going to realize he's about to get blocked, and when he gets blocked, uh, you know, even though it's a receiver going up against an edge rusher, it can still be a good situation. And by the way, by blind side, I mean the literal definition, as in like surprise, not an illegal blind side block. That's that's something completely different. So if he does that, you then have, you know, tight end can block another defensive lineman. And now your right tackle can pull around and he can block the linebacker. But really watch 44 and watch what he's going to do here. Watch him just step in immediately, which means he takes out the tight end and, or excuse me, he takes out the tackle, which allows for another Cardinal player who the tackle was supposed to block, get all the way over there and make that quick play. Kyle Yushek tried to block him, but was not going to work out too well. So really good, uh, you know, just awareness by the Arizona Cardinals. So just, you kind of learn how to do some of this stuff. So that is an issue, but also you can say that with any team for any scheme whatsoever. Like, for example, something like this, this is why these, you know, outside runs work so effectively is the way you're going to do this is you, you know, you see who you're blocking. You can't block everybody, right? Uh, unless a team is playing two safety deep, which Arizona is not, they're going to leave someone unblocked. And the guy on the edge who I've circled in yellow, he is the unblocked man. So where do you want to run the ball? Obviously not to the, you know, offense is right that's going to be trouble. You run the ball away from him and watch how well this works when you can pitch it away from him. Look, you do pitch it to your left. The edge rusher is never going to be able to get over there and you pick up a good chunk of yards on that play. And the you know blocking was great, partially because Arizona is not the best run defense team, but also partially because you, know, you block well and you now have one guy for each guy, basically. 
And there's also stuff like this that you can see in every game of just plays working where it's going to be a cover three zone. Again, kind of very similar to the other play I showed you right here. But watch what happens when Garoppolo does, in fact, make the correct read. Look, Garoppolo takes the snap, looks to Kittle, then gets over to Ayuk. So this is literally, I mean, this is the exact same play as last time with the exact same players as last time. This time, Garoppolo is just going through his progressions better. And I almost wonder if someone said on the sideline, because this one was later, hey, that was open. Make that play. It's open here as well, and watch what happens. Jimmy G does make the throw a bit high, but Ayuk makes a tough catch, and they're able to pick up some yards right there. So again, the scheme works. Unfortunately, Ayuk would then fumble it, and so that kind of you know made things a li little bit more difficult. There was also a play when Kittle fumbled it. So listen, uh, you know fumbles can, will be the death of an offensive coordinator. You you absolutely hate when that happens, just kind of unfortunate, but the scheme is working, like the plays are working, they're not always executed perfectly, but a lot of times they are too, like this one's another one, this is a little bit of a staple of the Shanahan offense, but it can work really well, uh, what you do is, it's a little bit different than what we've seen him do in the past, but this, this kind of stuff is what he likes to do, this is a cover two play, you have, it's, or it's quarters coverage actually, it's cover four, but I mean it's a two safety deep play and what you do is you have your receiver lined up to the offense's left who's going to run a deep route which is going to try to get the corner out of position you then have kind of uh you know a route that appears as though it's going to be just in between a gap in coverage look right when this play starts so you notice the deep corner uh does go away and now i've circled in the box you see kittle with the safety but the safety is kind of thinking like okay well we're supposed to have help here i gotta move in though i gotta cover this up a little bit because uh, Kittle, you know, could get open. The issue is that Kittle is not actually running a route towards the sideline. He's running a deep route. So when he does that, you're going to notice that, again, could have been a better throw, but Kittle still makes a great catch. Kittle means a lot to this offense, and when he gets hurt, you see the offense really struggle. So having him healthy and available, that obviously makes a big difference as well. So there definitely are plays that do work. So yeah, I mean, listen, it's a very interesting situation with San Francisco. Like I said, I do think most of the issues are under defense, but Shanahan is an offensive guy, so I want to talk about it from the offensive perspective. Do I think Shanahan should be fired? I, I don't. I think you have to give him one more year. You have to give him one more year. Maybe you don't give him more than one more year because uh, I could I could see that uh, being a thing just simply due to the fact that like, you know, if this continues to be a problem, you only get so long of a shelf life in the NFL. I don't care, you know, how hyped up you are. I don't care what your last name is. That is a very real thing. It absolutely is. Uh, I, I would still also say, though, that like, okay, we shouldn't just look at win-loss record. We should look at other stuff. Win-loss record is not the end-all, be-all, even for a head coach whose job is to win games. Uh, his job is also, you know, uh, X's and O's and things of that nature. And if he's getting beat that way, then, um, then I, you know, that's when it becomes an issue. I think one of the stats I keep hearing is the Matt Nagy has a better win percentage than Kyle Shanahan. And that's true, but they're both offensive minded coaches. And look at the defenses Matt Nagy has had over the years. Like they didn't make, the, you know, they didn't go 12 and four because of Matt Nagy. They went 12 and four because they had a good team and Matt Nagy did his part in that season. He, I mean, he won coach of the year, but, uh, you know, since then, it's been more of a, they've, they've done, uh, you know, all right. They've been very mediocre since then. So, um, yeah, that's what I think about Shanahan. Not sure how this got to Matt Nagy, but regardless, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.